Welcome everyone to an all new Let's Play. This time we are heading back into the courtroom as the number one crazy man in Japan. Or US. This is Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. This is the third in the line of the Turnabout Court or Gyakuten Saiban series otherwise known as Ace Attorney. And, well, we're going to waste no time in actually starting this game. So, as I mentioned in the disclaimer, if you like long courtroom dramas, this is your thing. If you like hammy acting, this is your thing. Or, if you just really want to hear me scream like a nut in certain parts, this is your thing. So with this, it's time for most of y'all, or, <laughs> yeah, most of y'all, because I don't know what the hell y'all be doing. So, we're going to jump into the first case of this Let's Play of Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Episode 1, Turnabout Memories. <laughs> How did I get into this mess? Why? Why did I do that? That girl, you shouldn't see her anymore. Hey! It's not your business! I'm telling you for your sake. If you continue to see her, it's gonna be bad news. You're lying! Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! D don't talk about her like that! Five years earlier, Mia Fey, second trial. Oh, really? This is this is happening on my birthday. Wow, April eleven, <laughs> April eleven, nine forty a.m. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number Three. <sighs> it's finally time. I'm kind of nervous. Um. Oh, Mr. Grassberg. Good morning. No, oh, Mia. Please, calm yourself down. You're going to get yourself arrested for suspicion. Behave at home. What are you talking about? Are you relaxed, Mr. Grassberg? Look at me, I'm relaxed. <clears throat> um. Go on my pose. <laughs> you obviously haven't got the temperament to be a lawyer. Uh, uh. Uh, I'm so sorry. It, it's just that I'm so nervous today. Oh, that's right. This is your first time in the big leagues, isn't it? Well, never you fear, my dear. I, Marvin Grossberg, am natural service. Um, actually, this is my second time in court. Still, you surprise me. What? With your earnest request last night. Let me handle this case, you son of a in quite falsely, too. I just found out yesterday about the case, I mean. What? You've already learned all the relevant facts. Well, about that, you see. I mean, of course I have. I can... Oh, dear. In any case, don't let our clients see you. You're so nervous. You see the poor young man in the pink sweater over there? That's our client. Smiling, me. Uh, uh. I just want to say 
I I'll give it all I got. <laughs> or something? Mr. Right? Actually, it's right. Like the Flag Brothers. People screw it up all the time. I guess I have a cold. That's what that mask is for. It's Japan, alright. My doc says this way I will be... I will give it to anyone else. Be kind to others, he says. Right, Mr. Wright, you have nothing to fear in court today. If you're truly innocent, I promise I'll save you. <laughs> Please, let go of it. <coughs> That's right, he's the one on trial, not you. He's the one who should be nervous. You need to stay strong for your client, Mia. My name is Mia Fey. I'm still pretty new at this lawyer thing. The first time I appeared in court was a year ago. But that trial traumatized me so badly, I thought I'd never set foot in another courtroom. It's been one year since then, and well, here I am again. But this time, this time, I'll win. For my client and for myself. April 11th. Damn it. 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number two. Court is now in session for the trial of Phoenix Wright. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution is ready, Your Honor. How lip. The defense today is Miss. Miss. Mia Fay, was it? Yes, Your Honor. Is there a problem? Oops. I was under the impression that Marvin Grossberg was to be leading the defense. Yes, well, you see, Mr. Grossberg had a, a bit of an emergency. Emergency? But isn't that him standing now right next to you? Yes, well... You, you're just a rookie. Are you sure you can really handle this? Don't let him scare you, Mia. Give him your toughest look. Give him your best puff puff. Of course, your honor. I think. Hmm. Well, Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Stop playing with your hair like that. I can't believe a veteran like me has to spend his time babysitting a new defense lawyer. Twang. 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 Don't worry, little girl. It'll be all over soon. What was that all about? Was he trying to trash talk me? Yes, Mia, he was. Now then, I'd like to proceed with a summary of events on the day in question. The incident occurred on the campus of Ivy University. The murder victim was a student named Doug Swallow. <laughs> um, yeah, um, moving on. <laughs> He was a fourth year student studying pharmacology. Hmm. Sounds like he was a very bright young man. Yes, his name was Doug D. Swallow. Yes, well, next we have a photo taken of the scene of the crime. The students discovered a scene shortly after the victim of uh, <clears throat> students discovered the scene shortly after the murder. 
they found the victim's body. And the defendant, who had obviously bungled his getaway. Then they called the police. Hmm, that certainly makes the defendant look very suspicious indeed. Very well. The courtroom accepts this photo into the record as evidence. <laughs> By the way, I can't quite tell the cause of death from this photo. <laughs> your reputation for sagacity, sagacity is well earned, Your Honor. Sagacity. The truth is that this victim died of an unusual death. Unusual death. What do you mean, Mr. Pate? Well, perhaps the defense would like to take this question? Hmm? Simple question. I thought you, I might loosen you up a bit. I am a genteel man, if you will. You sure like jerking off your hair, don't you, sir? Um, a what? Stand up to me, ma'am. Show what you're made of. Bam! A perfect opportunity. Well, what was it? The cause? Go on! They say you know at least this much. I I'm so sorry. I didn't get a chance to read the read through the whole file. Uh, my hemorrhoids are beginning are beginning to act up. Now see here, the details of the case are filed in the court record. But you know that already, didn't you? Uh, the court record. I think I can see that by touching the court record button. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All the weapons we need to we need can be found in the court record. Take a good hard look at the data there and think carefully before you answer, my dear. Yes, sir. I I'll do just that. I got to stay calm. I can't let that prosecutor get the better of me. The court record. Okay, let's take a look. Yeah, 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 we know. I've done this game two times. I know what the court record is, sir. And now then, with the attorney for the defense, please answer the question. What was the cause of death? Electrocution. According to the court record, it was a fatal electric shock. In other words, electrocution. Electrocution? Hmm. But how could such a thing happen? Did the murderer use some n new... Did the murderer use some new type of new super powerful stun gun, perhaps? The answer that I will become crystal clear as this trial proceeds, Your Honor. But before that, there is one more vital issue. What, what's that? Why, motive, of course. Apparently there was some bad blood between the victim and the defendant. Bad blood? What, what do you mean? Oopsie, I'm terribly sorry. You're the defense attorney, so you must know all about it. I shouldn't be stealing your spotlight like this. I really don't like this guy's smug attitude. That's Winston Payne for you. Here's a smooth here's one smooth operator. If you catch my drift. They don't call him the rookie killer for nothing, you know. And now then let's hear from the defense. What was the source of the bad blood between the 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 victim and the defendant. And this time I would like to see some supporting evidence. Uh, evidence? Uh, no need to get all worked up over this. As I said before, all the weapons can be found in the court record. Find the evidence you need and you shove it into old Greybeard's face. Y yes, sir. Into old Greybeard's face. Ahem! <clears throat> Mr. Grossberg, try to set a better example for the young lady. Mia, yeah, evidence is the only thing in the court record. People's profiles are, are as well. You can toggle between profiles and evidence, so be sure to go over it all. Now then, let's see what you've got. What was the cause of the bad blood between Phoenix Wright and the victim? Well, that answer is completely and blatantly obvious. It is... Take that! 
the reason for the bad blood between the two of them was this woman here. Dahlia Hawthorne, is it? Very good, Miss Faye. You seem to have picked up on at least this much. This woman is the girlfriend of the defendant, Phoenix Wright. But about eight months ago, she was with the victim, Mr. Swallow. <laughs> she didn't spit. <laughs> Clearly she has some part to play in this story. Hmm. Ah, uh, he's done it again. Before the cross-examination starts, he's already got the judge thinking like he wants. Very well, Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. If it pleases the court, the prosecution would like to call Mr. Phoenix Wright. What? The defendant himself? Well, Miss Faye? If it's fine, after all, Mr. Wright is innocent, right? The defense has no objection. Very well. The court called Mr. Phoenix Wright to the witness stand. A witness, please state your name and occupation. Uh, yes. <coughs> My name is Phoenix Wright. My job is, um, well, right now I guess I'm a suspect. No, no, he means what you did before you were. <laughs> I, I was a university student. Mr. Wright, you understand that you are suspected in the death of your fellow student, Duck Swat? But, but, but I didn't do it! I did it! I tell you! I, I tell you what! <laughs> what the defendant please refrain from passing on the school to the rest of us? It seems the witness has something he wants to say. Well then, Mr. Wright, please tell us about your relation to the victim. Right away, Your Honor! Yuck. The Victim and I. A Quinn Martin production. Oh, I... I... I am here. Why not a killer? All I did was find his body. Oh, I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Ugh. I never even talked to that stuck up British wannabe. Hmm, I see. So you hardly knew the victim. Yeah, I, like I said, I got a killer. Seems like the judge understands. Hmm. No being naive, you know. Too naive. Huh? <laughs> you see that you've forgotten one small thing, young lady. And that would be... This witness still has to undergo something called cross-examination. Cross-examination? He's right, and it's the defense duty to carry out the cross-examination. The purpose is to determine if a witness testimony contains any con contradictions. Contradictions. If a witness is lying, those statements will conflict with the court record. But, but Mr. Wright is my client. Even if he is your client, in court all lies must be struck down. As a lawyer, that is your duty. What does he mean by that? Is he saying that testimony just down? That there was a lie, a contradiction. Now then, your cross-examination if you please, Mr. Please, Mr. Wright, tell me you have been lying. You wouldn't do that to me, would you? He wouldn't if he couldn't help it. So here in the cross-examination, we're going to press one statement. That statement is number four. Hold it! 
Mr. Wright, you stated the following in your testimony. I hardly knew the guy to begin with. Th that's right! And he lied But that doesn't sound right. If you hardly knew him. Then why would he, then why would you say that the victim was a stuck up British wannabe? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright? No, no, it wasn't me! I'm not a kill, I swear! Mr. Wright, I will give you an opportunity to revise your testimony. How is it that you knew the victim was, as you put it, a British wannabe? Yeah, yes, well... He was always walking around with a huge Union Jack on the back of his shirt. In this case, we're going to do this. We're going to present the crime photo right here. And... OBJECTION! Are you certain you saw the Union Jack? Yeah, I sure. It was right here, he's back. Miss Faye, is there some point to this line of questioning? Your Honor, please take a look. Take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, there's absolutely nothing, nothing written on the victim's back. Hey, wait a minute! He's wearing a leather jacket! Mm, Jack was on the back of the t-shirt he was wearing. I was under the impression that you accidentally came across the body, but if that was really the case, then you wouldn't know that, would you? You have no idea at all what he was wearing underneath that jacket. Mr. Wright, you've been lying to me! <laughs> Mia! You made old Clyde cry! Let him bet Pete on his chest and stand for Phoenix anyways! I can't believe I trust him. Mr. Wright was all wrong. <laughs> that was an impressive bit of cross-examination. <laughs> oh, thank you for uncovering the defendant's lies for me. It's quite clear that this man did not simply stumble upon the scene of the crime. Uh-oh, did I go too far? Yeah, ain't it like a woman to go too far? Uh, by the way, Mr. Wright, you seem to have a rather bad cold. Have you taken any medicine for it? Uh, yeah, I took some, but... Was the medicine that you took an over the counter brand called Cold Killer X? Yeah, that's right. It kills colds good. Hey, wait a second. How'd you know I'm a big fan of Cold Killer X? <laughs> Would you happen to have that medicine with you right now? Well, actually, I seem to have lost it somewhere. He lost it. Does this even have anything to do with the case? Mr. Wright, shall I tell you where your code medicine is right now? Huh? Your Honor, I'd like you to take a look at another photo from the scene of the crime. W what's this? In the victim's hand, it's... It's... Cold Killer X! Yes, but even I got a bottle of Cochlear X in my apartment. I'm sorry, but I'm afraid that document won't work. There is no doubt as to who uh, this bottle of Cochlear X belonged to. Especially since Mr. Wright's fingerprints were all over it! What? Sensing his murderous intent, Mr. Swallow <coughs> must have picked up uh, the bottle of medicine. Dropped by Mr. Wright and hid it in his hand. 
his purpose in doing so can only have been to identify his kid as Phoenix Wright. Order! Order in the court! Your Honor, I beg to present this photo and butter's evidence. Very well, the court will accept them into the record. So we have the second crime photo and the bottle called Killer X. Also, the victim's wristwatch was broke. Broken? Yes, it ceased functioning when a large wave of electricity passed through it. Oh, well, Mr. Wright, do you have some kind of explanation for all of this? Mm. This is really bad. Oh, my buttocks. My poor, poor hemorrhoids. Take some preparation age, Jesus! What really happened? The truth is, I live because he called me. He was in the pharmacology department, so we agreed to meet at 245 behind that building. We talked for a bit, and then around three, we split up. Then later, when I went back, I found him lying there. I've been taking Coke Killer X for the last two, three days. But my, but I lost my bottle of it around lunchtime on the day of the accident. Mr. Wright, that's completely different than the testimony you previously gave. <laughs> I'm sorry, honey. I, I was afraid you wouldn't believe the truth. You know, forgive me if I say I find your uh, current testimony any more credible. Hmm, Miss Faye, please begin your course examination. Oh, please, Mr. Wright, don't tell any more lies. Please, Mia, don't PMS. You and your beautiful, busty tits of yours. <clears throat> Moving on. Here we're going to press two statements. Here. Was it Mrs. Swallow who indicated you should meet at 2.45? Yeah, we were both there right on time. Hmm, you said the victim was in the pharmacology department, correct? Yeah, he was studying how to manufacture and improve pharmaceuticals. Everyone called him the alchemist of IVU. Well, at least it wasn't full metal. An alchemist, I see. I gotta admit, that was a little, it was a little suspicious. He had a whole laboratory and everything. It's filled with chemicals and strange machines that run on high voltage electricity. <laughs> How fascinating. One moment. <laughs> How fascinating you sound like it was quite an ambitious young man. What do I do? Maybe I should ask him for more for some more details. What we're gonna ask here is Pharmacology. I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about the pharmacology department. Well, okay, sure. I don't know all that much, though. A little bit earlier in your testimony, you said something interesting. You said that the department uses strange machines that run on high-voltage electricity. That's right. They sure look dangerous. They use non-standard voltages, so there are high-voltage cables everywhere. High voltage cables. Yeah, there were electrical poles set up all around the building. They, the high voltage cables run overhead around the roof. Finally, I think we're getting somewhere. And the next statement we're going to push is number six.
On the day of the incident, what did you do for lunch? Huh? What does that have to do with anything? You can never be too sure. I always eat with Dolly. They're just the two of us. Dolly's homemade lunches are just the greatest. Oh, puppy love. I've been there. Mmm, his mini omelettes are magically delicious. <laughs> yeah! Why'd you punch me in the jaw? Oh, I'm so sorry. I just felt like hurting someone all of a sudden. Damn it, Sheena! Anyway. I think that's enough. Now... So the defendant and the victim met at approximately the time of his death. And then the defendant returned to the scene of for some unknown reason. I'm not entirely convinced by his explanation about the missing body either. Let me be frank here, Mr. Wright. Your testimony cannot be trusted. What are you mean? <laughs> I knew it was too much work for the little girl. <laughs> oh, she is not little where it counts, folks. However, there is one mystery that still remains. That is, Your Honor. How the murder was carried out, of course. Just how was the victim electrocuted? I don't believe the murder weapon has been produced yet, correct? Well, that is... I... you are correct, Your Honor. So how exactly was Mr. Swallow killed? If I could somehow establish how it was done... Maybe I could still come out of this mess smell like a rose. What we're going to do is you're going to have to establish something. Your Honor. Yes, Miss May. I believe that if we were to piece together everything we heard up until now, we should be able to solve the mystery of how Mr. Swallow died. That I would be most impressed. <laughs> Quite the best statement coming from a rookie. But even a beginner like you must understand the basic rules of the court, yes. An attorney must be able to substantiate their arguments with evidence. Hmm. Of course I know that. Actually, I had totally forgotten about that. Now then, Miss Faye, let me see what you've got. Show me how you believe the victim was electrocuted. Well, we're gonna do this. And we're just gonna tell him. To take that! As for the cause of death, I'd say this picture capture it, captures it quite well. What? But there's nothing that even remotely resembles a murder weapon here. Hmm, I'm afraid the defense is going to have to explain this in a bit more detail. Miss Faye, where exactly in this photo is the murder weapon? Well, I can tell you right here. Please don't talk to me, please don't talk to me, please don't talk to me, please don't talk to me. Don't talk to me. One moment. Now, folks, where you see... Where you see right here... I'm pointing to. That's where we're going to have our answer. <clears throat> Actually, I believe it's either this one or this one. This one is, of course, as you can see, cut. And this one, of course, is, of course, just hanging down. So I'm going to just do this. Present this. Oh, fudge. Ahem. <clears throat> it's right here. <laughs> I turned it down. I don't know why I did that, but anyway. What I mentioned before is, yeah, this is right here. Well, naturally, it's right here. That's... That's... What is that? A severed electrical cable, I believe, Your Honor. Remember the testimony we've heard? The machines in the pharmacology... 
the pharmacology students use in their experiments require high voltage. And because of that, there are special high voltage cables strung up everywhere. <clears throat> so then the high voltage cable. Yes, the high voltage cable is the cause of death. That is the most likely explanation. Hmm. That certainly sounds plausible. Well, Mr. Payne, what do you have to say about this? Well, I believe some praise is in order. Don't toy with me, old man. Now, now, the victim's cause of death may indeed have been a high-voltage cable. However, I want you to think about what that really implies. The only one who had the opportunity to use the cable as a murder weapon was... The defendant. That much is certainly true. Yes, and that's not all. We have proof. There is yet of a proof that will establish that Mr. Wright was the murderer. Uh, you do? Well, what is it? It's fingerprints. Fingerprints? You mean that the defendant's fingerprints were on something besides the, bo the missing bottle? Let's take another look at the crime scene photo. As you can see, the victim is wearing a leather jacket. And as you may know, leather holds fingerprints quite well. Ah, oh, you mean... Yes, it was quite clearly imprinted on the chest area of the victim's jacket. The palm print of the, def of the defendant's very own hand. What? I can only think of one way Mr. Wright could have left a print like that. Intent of murder, they squarely pushed the victim towards the servant electrical cable. Order! 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 That's enough! I think we can conclude that there's no reason to continue with this cross-examination. Stick a fork in us. We're done. Mr. Crossberg! My hemorrhoids never lie. The show is over, Mia. Yeah. I knew that boy was guilty the first time I saw him. No! You're wrong! Mr. Wright is his. No further evidence is required to convince me of this man's guilt. Y Your Honor! At this time, I am prepared to render a verdict in this case. Him right on your ass! Do you have... Uh, do you have something further to add, Miss Fay? Is this what you want, Mr. Wright? Hmm? You still haven't told us the truth. The whole truth. If you don't say something now, the judge is going to hand down his verdict! But, but I, I can't! I just, just can't see it! If I told you what really happened, then I... Be, be, be. It's okay, Mr. Wright. I'm your attorney. You can trust me. Miss Faye. No matter what it, you have to say, I believe in you, and I'll represent you to the very end. <laughs> We've already established the defendant's guilt. There's no further need for him to say anything. <coughs> God, wait a minute! Mr. Wright, I, I'll tell you what really happened. But I've already told you, Mr. Wright, there's no need for that! I did it. I admit it. I pushed him. It's my fault. My fault that that swallow is dead. And it all comes back to here. That girl. You shouldn't see her anymore. Hey, it's not your business. I'm telling you for your sake. Continue to see her. It's going to be bad news. Y you're lying. Just listen to me. There's something you need to know about that girl. Stop it! Don't talk about her like that! Damn, Phoenix.
what you just said was that the truth? Yes, I was afraid. Afraid that if I told the truth, everyone would think I was the murderer for sure. Well, as things currently stand, we're all absolutely convinced you are. Please! Please give me one more chance to explain! This time, I swear, I swear I'll tell the whole truth. It'll be okay, won't it, Miss Faye? I... I believe you! Oh, um, but thank you. I still can't believe it. He really did push the victim. Mmm, it feels like my emeralds are doing the home shake! My god, man, do something about your hemorrhoids! Shit! When I push the victim... That guy, he was talking bad about Dolly. Fuck him! I lost my temper and gave him a shove. At that moment, I kinda... I, I heard some kind of loud noise. A little while after I left, I started to get worried. So I went back, but he, he was just laying there, dead. <coughs> ah, the explanation's really quite simple. When you pushed him, Mr. Swallow flew back and touched the electrical cable. He died from the shock, and that, as they say, is that. Hmm. A simple explanation, indeed. At the time of the incident, a light rain had been falling. But from the rain, the victim was more easily electrocuted. But, but when I pushed him, there was any electrical cables nearby. If there had been something like that, even I would have noticed it. That's true. Even a doofus like him couldn't miss that. Hmm. Miss Faye, let me warn you right now that if your cross-examination doesn't yield any new facts, I intend to deliver my verdict without further delay. Are we clear on that? I yes, Your Honor. Don't give up, Mia. If he is innocent, there must be some kind of evidence somewhere that will prove it. Here we go again with the third and most likely final cross-examination for Phoenix. Now here we're going to push the third statement. A loud noise. And what would you say that loud noise was, Mr. Wright? I'm not sure, but it was really loud. It was like, snap! You know, come to think of it, that was, I wonder what that was. <laughs> Clearly, Your Honor, it was the sound of the victim being electrocuted. You're not qualified to decide that! What should I do? I'm treading on some dangerous ground here. More details. Mr. Wright, that loud noise you may have heard may be extremely important. So try to remember what it was. Um, how do I put it? It was like a chat crack. Aha! Could it... Could have been... Yes, could have been... Hurry up and tell us! When I pushed him, he dropped the umbrella he was holding. Falcon! Sure! fell right on top of it and it broke. That was probably the noise I heard. An umbrella, hmm? And, di and did that umbrella belong to the victim? Yeah, it was a plastic umbrella. Cheap and frail. Kind of like yelling. Ooh, Phoenix Bird! And then again, I wish I had a kind of umbrella. I was totally sucked to the bone. Hmm. Miss Faye? What do you think? Is there something important in that testimony just now? Um, well... Yeah, it's important. This is it, Mia. The new information you've been waiting for. 
Of course it's important! No! This cheap umbrella is more than important, it's vital! I want to officially have it entered into the testimony. <laughs> Perfectly fitting. Flimsy information for flimsy lamb. The court agrees to the, de the defense request. Witness, please add the bit to about the cheap umbrella to your testimony. After I shoved him, he he fell down on top of his cheap umbrella. Now, in this case, we're going to do this. We're going to present the crime photo at this statement, and objection. Why didn't you t Why didn't you testify about the umbrella from the very beginning? Come on, if I had mentioned that. I would have been able to counter the prosecution's arguments earlier. What, what, what do you mean by that? Take another look at the crime scene photo. According to Mr. Wright, the victim fell on top of his umbrella. However, if you look closely, the umbrella is nowhere near the victim. Actually, it's by the electrical pole. You're absolutely right! The conclusion here is obvious. After the defendant left, the victim moved from where he fell. In other words, after he was pushed by the defendant, Mr. Swallow was still alive. No! Order! 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 The victim, he, he moved? Mr. Payne! The umbrella in this photo, where is it now? But, well, it was collected by the police at the crime scene. I want to present it as evidence immediately! So we get the umbrella added as evidence. But, but, but the umbrella could have simply been blown there by the wind! According to the testimony, the victim fell on top of the umbrella. There's simply no way it could have been blown there by the wind. I know this matter of the umbrella seems relatively trivial, but as long as the smallest doubt remains, I cannot render final judgment. <laughs> however, I find it still, uh, however, I still find it hard to believe that a huge hole has been blown in the prosecution's case by the defendant's testimony. So we get. Phoenix testimony, and well done, Mia. <laughs> Mr. Payne, what are you chuckling about? Pardon me, Your Honor. It seems I was expecting too much of a free ride. It was foolish to me think I could establish guilt through a cross examination alone. I'm afraid I don't follow what you're saying. Let me guess, you have another witness. Exactly, and this witness testimony will be intro... incontrovertible. I can't even spell. I can't even say a word. Big words, big words. Incontrovertible. Exactly, and this witness testimony will be incontrovertible. Big words. Well, who is this witness? Miss Dahlia Hawthorne. Dahlia Hawthorne? You don't mean... Dolly? I do, Your Honor. The defendant's very lovers of witness to the whole thing. That's right. She was at the scene of the crime when the murder took place. What? I'm sorry to break the bad news to you, my dear. Hmm. Hmm. Bad news. You couldn't be more wrong. Actually, I've been waiting for this. You can't be serious. Mia! What do you mean by that? I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Uh, cool. uh, I think this is a good point for us to stop at. Court will now enter a 20-minute recess.
Afterwards, we will listen to the testimony of Miss Dolly Hawthorne. April 11. Damn it, why on this day? 11.52 a.m. District Court, defendant lobby number three. It's Faye. I'm sorry about what happened back there. I, 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 it's all right. At least you told the truth in the end, Mr. Wright. Yeah, so I guess I can start to relax then, huh? Relax, my boy. You can't be serious after hiding such important facts. But, but, but the next witness is my dolly, right? She'll save me. I just know she will. Why do you think that? Huh? What do you mean? She, she's the love of my life, that's why. Oh, boy. The love of your life, hmm? Would you mind telling me more about you and Ms. Dahlia Hawthorne? Sure, no problem. Dahlia and I, we met, we met, first met about eight months ago right here in this very quiet house. Actually, I'm studying to be a lawyer on the side. And anyway, one day she and I just bumped into each other in the reading room downstairs. And that's why... I really think it was fate that brought us together. As soon as I first set eyes on her, I knew she was the one for me. Oh, here! Take a look at this! Mm -hmm. She gave it to me on the day we met as a symbol of our love. She had been wearing it around her neck that day, but then she took it off. But before she gave it to me, she said, I want you to carry this. So she gave it to you as a prisoner, I see. This dolly little bottle is filled with memories of my dolly little dolly. It certainly is a little bottle, all right? Makes me so happy. I showed everyone I eat. I want to share my happiness with the whole world. Oh, I know the feeling, man. Dolly is pending. Borrow from Phoenix Wright. Um, anyway. So after that, you and Miss Hawthorne started dating. Yeah, but she's shy. Every time I see her, she says, she always says the same thing to me. Please give it back now. What a strange girl asking for a prison back like that. By the way, Mr. Wright, the day you first met Dolly Hawthorne eight months ago, it wouldn't happen to have been on August 27, would it? Eh. Yeah, it was. But how'd you... This happened on August 27th, right here in this courthouse. What's that, some newspaper clipping? Let's see. Murdering courthouse. M -m Murder? What are you reading now? Oh, let me see that. Oh, I see. Mia, I think I can understand what you're trying to say. And I think I understand why you suddenly took such a keen interest in this case. You believe there is something, there is some relationship between these two cases, am I correct? And we get the newspaper clipping. I hope you don't mind, Mr. Grusberg. I, I need to finish this myself. Oh, uh, yes, but I'm afraid what you have will not be enough, my dear. I'll go and have a look at the downstairs reading room and see what else, see what else I can find. Th thank you. I want to do whatever I can to be of help to you, Mia. Well, looks like recess is about over. We all better get moving. I guess so. That recess sure seemed longer than 20 minutes, though. No shit. <sighs> so what is gonna happen next? Find out in the second half of case number one of Let's Play, Phoenix Wright, Trials and Tribulations. <laughs>